Welcome to episode eight of the very first season of Tennis Underground. And I kind of took a break. Um, I have a new setup if you guys are watching the video version. Obviously, video version is going to be on YouTube on uh, the channel Mark Sanset. Uh, the audio version is going to be either on Google Podcasts, Spotify, or all the uh, other major um, podcast and audio platforms. So if you want to check out the audio only and download it, um, link in down the description below. Um, but this summer has been pretty busy, but I wanted to invite one of my best friends, I would say. I would say. You are one of my best friends, which is kind of scary. Does that trigger you? <laughs> no, no. no, no. I'm, you're one of my best friends too, okay. Mark. Um, Chris went to Whitewater. And unfortunately, Chris uh, tried out for the Whitewater men's team and got cut, similar to me. But you're two years younger than me. But I wanted to talk about, uh, for once, I'm not going to talk about myself. I want to talk about your personal journey because um, in college, you were okay, right? High school, you're a good varsity high school tennis player, almost qualified for state in Illinois. I made state. Uh, oh, you did? Yeah. You did. Yep. When did you make it? Uh, junior year. Junior year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not senior year. No, I just switched rackets and uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Not, not a good not idea. strings, though. No, okay. no. I hate hindsight. I went to that Wilson uh, K Factor. Remember the that? Cobra, the right? One, the, the red and white. Was it the red Cobra? And white? It was red and white Wilson K Factor. Fed played with it for a while. The ninety or ninety five. It was a inch. ninety. And that Why was would you switch to a ninety score inch? Because oh. I'm an idiot. That's uh, you know, but and then yeah, it's unfortunate, but uh, that's the way it goes. <laughs> yeah. But I wanted to bring you here not only because you're local and you know. A very close friend of mine. But I wanted to talk about your journey post-college, which I would actually argue most of my YouTube um, subscribers and community are falling between the ages of, I think, 24 and 30. That's the demographics. But you were rated 4-0 when you just got back into tennis after competitive bodybuilding, right? Which is still a hobby of yours, but to a lesser of an extent. Let's talk about how you transformed um, your habits, your mentality, and even your tactics to get from a 4-0 to a 4-5? Um, oh, yeah. I mean, just starting at the beginning, you know, when I started playing tennis again, um, I had major shoulder issues. Um, I remember going out to Buckner Park a number of times and just hitting against the wall, and it just it killed my shoulder. Like, I had just, I had ruined it with, with lifting. I Literally had lifting. so many problems, yeah. Was it overhead um, uh, shoulder presses? It was actually military press. Um, yeah, so, Pretty similar so dumbbells, yeah. yep, and it's that initial rep when you go here, here, um, I had been trying to push, uh, push to 70, and that actually gave me shoulder issues and lower back issues, believe it or not, along with deadlifting. Were you arching your back? Uh, yeah, my deadlift form is not good. Okay. I had those long legs, and it makes it difficult, but anyways, um, so it took me a while just to get back into it. Um, I... Uh, you know, I started, I, I remember just signing up for a random 4-0 team that first year, and I played... How old were you at the time? Uh, was This was back in, I want to say 2017, so I probably was 23. Oh, you youngin'. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I had started working, and I was over at, you know, I would, I would spend my day, nights at Gold's Gym. I did that for like two years. Well, and that's then, your issue. <laughs> yeah, and, then, and they closed actually after a while. They closed like three months after I had... Uh, I had quit. That location? That location. It was probably because of you. The sign is still there. Yeah. Uh, I was, there's a lot of reasons that I won't get into. <laughs> but, oh, was uh, there an incident? Um, there were many incidents. It was $15 a month. So that should tell you all that you need okay. to know. Um, but um, anyways, uh, you know, I had, um, I had just started uh, playing, you know, a couple times a week, I was trying to just play and not, I was trying to just basically hit my forehand and not have shoulder issues. And I actually hurt myself in like the second 4 0, want to say it was like a two singles match that first summer. And you're a single specialist. We, we want to get that out of the way. And he's also a lefty. Um, I mean, were you physically feeling good? I, fe I felt pretty good. I was uh, moving around the court well, but I, I had hurt my shoulder just hitting forehands because of the issues I had in there. Okay. And then um, I played that winter at WAC and tried to slowly get back into it, but I was taking weeks off at a time just trying to build it back up. So huh. it was after, it was, so that first year I played, uh, I want to say it was like a team with like, um, might have been Dan Henkel, Will Schultz was on it. Um, so it was a local 4-0 uh, um, team. USTA team tennis format. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, so uh, I don't remember too much about it, but 
couple matches. I ended up winning. I remember winning one where I just had that hurt shoulder the whole time and I was just pushing, but it was 4-0. Yeah. Yeah, I could. But anyway, so um, then that following year was the year that I played 4-0 um, with um, a team that, um, you know, I was still self-rated, so I couldn't actually play singles and beat people because I would get bumped. Yeah. And we, I'd forfeit all my matches. Yep. So after that, um, that first year I played, you know, three doubles and just, you know, laid low, got the four Oh computer rating. Good. Um, smart. And, smart. Yeah. Well, you gotta, otherwise you lose, you know, oh, those matches. We, we got to talk about the, we'll USCA talk about that later. another, another uh, episode. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, and I was just playing that whole time, just working on my game, playing people over, um, over at my club and um, after a while, um, so that first year, uh, or so that was actually the second year then, I'm playing on that team. The next year, I can, you know, I get my computer rating, I can play one singles, I can just have my run. So that so was the year. No restrictions, no uh, playing down. <laughs> nope. So I, yeah. I played that um, and I lost one set the whole year. And you won that match, correct? Um, I did win that match. Okay. And actually, interesting story here. That match was our last match of the year, and we were not in a good spot. We had somebody that we picked up that got uh, DQ'd because he was he, you know, got bumped. Yep. Um, so we were not supposed to go to regionals at all. Okay. We had a shot in the last week. Uh, the two best teams were playing each other. I think we were tied for second, but that those number one and number two teams were playing each other. Yep. And we had to 5-0 Riverside, and then one of the teams had to 3-0 the other. A specific team had to 3 Sorry, 3-2 so the, okay. the other. So the chances of that are like maybe 5%. The chance of them 3 twoing, yeah, I, I yeah. go you know 20% on that, and then we have to 5-0, and we haven't been. And Riverside was a good team at the time. Yeah, another USCA uh, local team Yep, at the time. Yep, and uh, so we ended up, uh, everybody stepped up. They A lot of tiebreakers, they all won, and I was the last match out there, and that was the first set I dropped all year to a good player. Yep. Um, and it was the farthest I had been pushed, and then I ended up winning in a tiebreak. Ten point, and a match tiebreak. And a match tiebreak. So uh, third set, yeah. At USTA, the third set, they play a 10-pointer. Which is, I, I would argue that's, I mean, we could get, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole too big, but I, I get it why it's a 10-point tiebreak. I still wanted them to play it out, but at least USTA um, State League still plays ad scoring. And not Thank God, scoring. it's Thank not, God. you know, we, you get we, a net court on yeah. the twos. How many times <laughs> have you been there? We, we, just... I, I do want to talk about our national run in a podcast format. That, that was that was a fun time. I got nightmares for yeah. losing that match. <laughs> Just poverty team. How bad um, we played. <laughs> so like, when it comes to um, your okay, so obviously to get from, get from four zero to four five because you've always been a pretty talented junior, right? You're you're a talented college kid in, ter um, in terms of tennis. I mean, I would bagel myself. Yeah. Of the, and, my myself trying out for Whitewater, I would easily bake sure. myself now. And so. we went to University of Wisconsin Whitewater, by the way. Um, if you guys haven't noticed, good national D three program. Shout out to Frank. But it's one of those things too, where like I completely agree. I would double bagel myself most days now that I'm 32 versus me when I was 18. The only thing I have going for me as an 18 year old was that I was in better shape. Yeah, we played that, a little. We played a little challenge match out there. I remember we got paired up and we hit a little bit. We played a few games. What was the score? What was I the think outcome? you were up like three two, but the only reason I was getting games is you were just hitting. Was I hung over? Okay. You. <laughs> I was, I, oh, I have no idea. I but probably was hungover. Statistically, <laughs> it is very likely that you were hungover. <laughs> if you thought I was bad now, I was much worse in college because I could get away with it. I could still drink like twelve beers, and then I eat seventy two topper sticks and still have a six pack the next morning. Can't do that now. And if I drink one IPA after tennis, I am Bloated. like a little shaky driving okay. home. What is this, by the way? This is uh, like... this is uh, Untitled Art uh, Hazier IP Triple IPA. So it's gonna this hit. This is one of the best hazies I've right. had. This it's is great. great. Yeah, it was nineteen dollars for a four pack at my local store. Yeah. I've had a few by Untitled Art, but this is uh, norm they're normally pretty good. Oh, they're they're incredibly expensive. Yeah, they're yeah, always that's what I've noticed. Expensive. Um, so did you ever like change your so? Contrary to what most people would probably have experienced from 4 0 to 4 5. And by the way, if you're a 4 0 tennis player, you're basically cream of the crop. You're like a god compared to what most rec tennis players would aspire to. 
and four five, and then five zero, oh, and then five five. He is you know upwards on that. I, the, uh, essential tennis. My my friend Ian did a very good um, YouTube episode, uh, a YouTube video on that of like what percentage of players actually get to four five. NTRP rating and what percentage gets to like five zero? Yeah, it's what like what is smart. that for? What's the four or five percentage? Do you have that? Off I, the top I believe of your it's head? about one percent. So one percent of and are we taking into account every tennis player that joins a league, a USTA league, or what's the? That's that that's where is it's a good question because I don't know what the fundamental basis or definition of like oh did you pick up a tennis racket or did you actually register for USTA? So that I don't know, um, but. For my personal experience, obviously, this is completely anecdotal. I would personally believe every adult tennis player that is registered for USTA is in the NTRP uh, system, which is uh, the USTA's rating system. I, I believe it's the amount of adults that are registered in USTA but are not 4-5 is 99%. Or, that sorry, would make sense. 4-5 or lower. That would make yeah. sense. And you are getting those, you know, guys that just go, you know, Correct. join one league. But no, nothing wrong. Still, ninety nine percent. That's Percentile. and now when you go now when you go to five zero, what per, if the one percent or four five? What percent? Point one. You're saying that nine out of ten people that get to four five don't go to five zero. Correct. Don't get rated up to five zero. That I mean, I I can see. It. I, I believe it. It's a huge, you know, four five such a huge gap as we found. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, just. I'm just thinking of the matches I played, and, and to finish the story, I ended up going to regionals. We didn't win, but I won every one of my matches at 4-0, and I don't think I played very well at all. But I you won. You're undefeated. Back. I think every single match was 2-3. and three. I had Every match I played was 2-3 and three at but, regionals. Oh, 6-2, two, 6-3? Six, two, six, yes. Okay. And yes, it was undefeated. Um, so that's how you got bumped up to 4-5. Because you just won too yeah. much at high level. Yeah, I won like 21-0. and 0. So was, that, that 20% yeah. of... You, your team 5 owing the next team, and then that one team A beating team B 3 2 actually happened. And you guys s- squeaked it out, got to regionals, yep. but you couldn't move to nationals. Exactly. We, I think Ohio won it that year. And oh, shout wow. out to those guys. I mean, that was, they're a ton of fun. I still play with them at 4 5 now a little bit. I think I jumped onto their team for a couple matches at the end of the season. Played a couple guys that I would argue are 5 0, but, uh, <laughs> and had great matches. So well, it, it's it's kind of weird because you and I, your experience at the four level and my experience at the four or five level, we we kind of got spoiled. And part of it is because we chose the right team and were damn good tennis players at our time. I'm rated a five zero now, unfortunately, because the USTA hates my guts. Yeah, that's a death sentence. Oh, I'm trying to get rated down, but it's one of those things where like we got spoiled being on a cream of the crop team. In our respective divisions back in the day, right? And you're in a respectable four or five team now, right? Or did you not? You didn't play um, four or five this year. I played four or five for a couple matches. Okay, it was a, it was most of those four zero guys. So it just it was just for fun. It was just to play a couple matches, get that four or five. And I'm, I had a lot going on this year. It was just a late oh, yeah, thing. Yeah. So, I mean, jobs, um, your career, but obviously but, your relationships. <laughs> but like you said, we've been spoiled with, especially um, even with, with real- our mixed doubles league. Yeah. I mean, we always seem to be going to state. Correct. And if you think about it, there's five, six, seven At least. teams in there. Well, it's kind of scary because 4-5, um, when I was not a good 4-5 tennis player, 4-5 in Milwaukee, you might have not been playing around in the time because I, I was about 25, 26, and you're three or two years younger than me. Yes. You might have just picked up tennis back again because you took a... I'm going to be 31 this month. Are you 33 yet? I'll... No. But soon. Or soon. within... Yeah. So I've okay, got so two years ahead of yeah, you. Yeah, two on, years. A- two academically. Years. And yep. about a year and a half uh, calendar. Actual. Year. Yeah. yeah. So um, about six, seven years ago, there were at least 20... Four or five USTA teams for men's in the Milwaukee area. There were 20. Are you kidding me? Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not I've never me. seen more yeah. than like. There were two flights of just 10 each. Did and they? How did they run the uh, playoffs? The winner of flight A plays the winner of flight B. Okay. Which is fair. Yeah. Okay. So it's like a, like a big 10 East and West type Correct. thing. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Okay. And now um, because, well, part of it is the pandemic. Um, I, I will agree with that. But it's also the USTA's job to make sure that doesn't happen, but, but it is. 
So I am sad to see, not necessarily just because I'm rated down, I'm rated up to a 5 so as you said, it's a death sentence um, for at least three years. I'm, I'm only seeing, I think, for 4-5, I think there are only eight total teams for 4-5, and you just play each other twice. See, and with 20 teams, I almost would argue that there, and, and I know there used to be a 5-0. Uh, many there years used ago. to be, yeah. All the guys Way. I play with at four or five yep. are like, oh yeah, I used to play five zero back in the day. Yep. And they get old and you know, and obviously, get yeah, married and play and depressed. Two, <laughs> I don't know about depressed, but <laughs> I, they play two and three doubles at four or five. Yeah, exactly. And that's yeah. you know, and it works. Yeah. Um, and now I would argue that four or five, one and two singles are usually um, college kids, you know, picked up yep. um, on a team that as long as they lie about their questionnaire yeah and some of them d1 and they're they're normally 5-0 at level and the fact that we don't have well no in all honesty the fact that we don't have a 5-0 level we have this giant four or five range where yep. there's like it, you feel like you're going up three levels between going to four or five to five oh you got your yep. low four fives you got your mid four it's it's huge and it's also the difference also the difference between you know are you a single specialist? Are you double specialist? Or are you one of those good ones where you could kind of do both at your level? And for me, and we can talk about this in the next episode, like for me, I am by far and away, if I'm not doing anything stupid the night before, I'm a mid or maybe high level 5-0 singles player. But for doubles, I'm like a mid 4-5 at best. I'm just being five foot eight. My serve has gotten better. I, I, I've changed some mechanics of it. I'm just not a natural volleyer. So I, I just hate how the NTRP USTA rating system kind of groups us up into like one conglomerate of like, hey, if you're this strong of a singles player, then you are this strong of a doubles player. It doesn't make well, much our, sense. Well, a perfect example is, uh, you know, our good friend Brian, who's been yeah. on this podcast before. Oh, Brian's fantastic. Um, Love I mean, look at, look oh, at yeah. him. He's, you know, he's, well, for one, he's six foot nine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nice. And he's a doubles player. He's yep. a double specialist, 100%. Um, and he, they, they leave him at 4 0 for some reason. Yep. And I, he will probably get bumped this year, but. I always say there's a very good chance. It's still not 100%. Very good chance he'll get bumped up to 4 5. <sighs> you know, if he doesn't, the memes can continue, oh, right? So many memes. <laughs> so many memes. He but, looked, like, yeah, I mean, yeah. G given his, I wouldn't even say background, just given his, um, his, his physical, his physicality of, like, what was given to him, um, his skill set, and his, just the way he plays tennis, he's a significantly stronger doubles player than a singles player. Oh, but the USC has recognized that. Yeah. I mean, a perfect example is our is our match on uh, on real tennis. I mean, yeah. do you see his volleys? He every time Amazing. he was at the net, it he was made just, like two on errors line, at the net. That line, yeah, yeah. It was it's like, crazy. Yeah. It's like I can't let this dude get to the net. So when when it comes to your okay, so when you were a four zero, when you picked up tennis again after you stopped getting injured six out of nine um, singles matches, did you have a goal where you looked yourself in the mirror, all shredded, naked, a little bit wet? You're like, I want to be a 4-5 tennis player. Um, I mean, I kind of, um, I was just, at, at one point I was just trying to battle the injuries. Um, okay, so that's your first priority. That was right? the number okay. one priority. But once okay. I got back into it, I was playing all the time. I feel like when I, when I was, you know, halfway through the 4-0 league, I just kind of knew that that's the level I was at. Yep. But, um, you know, I, I just, I think that... Um, where I was at at the time, you know, it, it was a little bit on the lower four or five side. Um, but I, at that point, I kind of knew that's, that's the level I was at. But I think it just took getting back into it and kind of figuring some things out. So and you knew you're a four zero, and you're, you're going to be a 4-5 eventually. I think at some point, I don't know, I can't tell you when exactly. I think it was once the injuries stopped. Really? That it really got, you know, I kind of got to that point. Oh, hey, um, when I swing a forehand... It shouldn't hurt every yeah, single time. Yeah, my shoulder doesn't <laughs> isn't on fire when I'm hitting a forehand. Yeah, that is number one. I remember trying to serve with that shoulder injury. It was like I had to hit it like I couldn't hit it like like with spin. Yeah, I yeah. had to just kind of flat hit it because if I hit it with any torque like at all, it was just. So if it's like this motion, it hurts. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. I don't know what it was, but I mean, thank God. Maybe it, your pecs were too big, dude. <laughs> dude. I, wasn't that big. I was, <laughs> I was 160 at the time I was competing. It wasn't 
Like, yeah, but no body fat. Jesus. Yeah, Christ. like four percent, five percent, probably. L- Lacey must have been. Ha- your fiance must have been happy at the time. <sighs> I don't know how much she really cares about that she stuff. Doesn't? But okay. Same. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> I think if I was the opposite, she might. If I was not five percent but fifty percent, <laughs> there might be an Thicker issue. Thicker than a snicker. <laughs> If I was uh, driving around our condo in my mobility scooter (laughs) and we had to install a chairlift to get up the stairs. Hey, all that fat might go towards one special place. Who knows? I don't think it works like that. I don't know if it does. (laughs) Leave a comment down (laughs) in the section below (laughs) if you guys think it works that way. I was waiting for that one. (laughs) So, okay, so you you went towards... um, You went... Through your journey about being from a 4 0 to, well, first of all, not getting injured, uh, to being like a steady high level 4 0 singles player and then a 4 5. So, what do you think? And I, I will give my input, not, not just for you as a singles player, but uh, I will give you my uh, biggest advice to people that are listening, watching about the biggest difference between 4 5 and 5 0 in singles. What do you think it is? So I think that going from 4.5 to 5.0, um, I'm going to give you two things in order of what I, what I would say. Is one more important than the other? Yes. Okay. Number right. one is you can't have a weakness. My weakness is my backhand. You can't get away with that at 5.0. Um, I, may, you know, I may hit with Mark and I may win some points, mm-hmm. but if I'm winning those points, I guarantee it's because he's probably being a little bit nice and not... <laughs> Hitting to my backhand. I'm hey, working on my backhand. I went to a wedding yesterday, and, so <laughs> I'm a little slow. So it's it's getting better, but it's not. I can't pass him with the reliability as I can with my forehand. Sure. And I think the biggest thing is the is not having a weakness. You have to be. If someone can pick on something, and beat you that way, I mean that is the biggest difference. Um, I hear what I hear is that at five zero. You really can hit any, you can almost hit the same shot as like a professional tennis player, but you can't do it at that consistency. Like they can uh, hit yeah, it correct, all correct. the time. Thank, thank you for You can hit caveat. it occasionally, yep. but they yeah. can do it just all the time. Okay, good. Um, I, I agree with that. So yeah, thank you. Number one is the, uh, is not having a weakness. Um, number two, um, I mean, so many things come to mind from like, you know, um, how much you're threatening with your serve to um, the type of ball you hit. But I would say number two um, in my mind is uh, you just have to have a good game sense for winning matches and you just have to be able to oh, the adjust tactician, your strategy IQ. at okay. any okay. time. It, it very, it really, you have to I'm trying to think how to say this. You just really have to be able to like fight through those close matches and like play smart and really. Th- and uh, again, I think number one is the biggest thing. It's just not having a weakness. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess my number two is just being able to like fight through those close okay. matches where you're going to tie breaks, you're going to, you know, third sets, you're in, you know, five, four situations. It just, it, that can affect you. You're going to be in so many of those if you're a competitive tennis player. And it's good. It's a privilege. So many. Yeah. Of them. Yes. You're going to be in tight tie breakers. You're going to have, you know, big forehands up six, five. You're going to have a ball at six, five that you uh. in a tie break that you should be able to put away. And just being able to hit that and being confident in it, which is something that, you know, I struggle with. So my opinion, and that's actually a very good, uh, very, very good uh, two points you made. Um, I strongly agree with the first one. And your first one said you can't have any weakness or not an apparent weakness. That's, that's what I would say. Right. So my number one is you can't, and this, this is about anywhere between 50 to 69 to 75% of what you said on the first one. Um, my fir- the two biggest differences for me between a 4-5 and a 5-0 singles player is you have to make less unforced errors in singles. That's my opinion. And that does tie into, you know, having a less uh, having no apparent weaknesses whatsoever, in my opinion. And what was your second one? Can you summarize that in like one sentence? Um, 
being cool under pressure okay. in tough okay situations uh it's a bit okay. of a reach it's probably not it the best example i That's would go fine. with number one over okay. number two any day um number two i would say in, in singles the difference between uh four five and five oh is that five o's in singles are so much more comfortable finishing at the net i would say they know when to come in which i don't know how to yet but apparently i'm a five o usca take note <laughs> But they, they know how to volley. They know how to hit an overhead. If you get an overhead inside of the service line at 5-0 singles, that should basically be a winner. You shouldn't lose that point. Yeah. yeah. It should basically be a winner. And unless it's like a near perfect lob, you should be on offense right after that overhead. So that, that, that's my opinion. But given your journey between 4-0 and 4-5, give me three differences in singles between 4-0 and 4-5. Well, actually, I want to I wanna sure. piggyback off what you're sure. saying. Um that's a really good point. Um, as far as finishing balls at the net in these service games, I mean, you know, you might be on serve and you're winning games at 40, 30, yep. you know, it happens all the time. And that's one. And point if you, lose. yeah, if you shank a ball, I've had it many times where I've missed a put away at the net and I end up losing that game. And that's the difference between a tiebreaker and six, four. Oh. So, you know, it, it, it's like what you're saying, I think is a, is definitely, something that you see at 5-0 tennis. You don't see a lot of just missed yeah. um, easy balls. At No matter what game style you are, whether you're Brian, who's six foot nine, whether you're you at six feet tall, whether you're me at five foot two, like you just don't miss easy balls. Oh, you gave me another inch. That's nice of you. Height? I was talking yeah. about height. <laughs> this is a strong freaking beer, man. It is a strong it's beer. Like it's like a tall one, too. It's, it's like, like 15%. Is this 10%? Percent? It's not 15. It's a triple. I was drinking Goose Island bourbon barrel last night. That's 13%. Really? Oh, yeah. That's a strong one. Mm-hmm. That's a strong one. Um, so, f- difference between 4 and 4 5 in well, singles. 4 and 4 5 in singles. Um, is fitness one of them? I would say fitness is one of them. Whether it's four strength, five cardio. is You can't, at 4 5, number one, you can't be a backboard and expect to win past maybe low 4 or 5. You yeah. might beat people occasionally. They're just spring balls that. left and right. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, so number one, you can't just completely push. Yep. Uh, number two, you have to be able to play long points. I think like what Mm -hmm. you're saying, fitness is one of them. Number three at four five, you have to, and you could argue this is the difference between three, five and four Oh, but I think at four five, you have to have some sort of weapon. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. You have to have something. Typically, it's forehand. For me, it's my forehand. Yeah. For Brian, it's his volley. Something it's, to bully the opponent. Yes. You have to have okay. something that this is my shot. This is what I want to yeah. hit. I'm going to get myself. So in contrast to 5-0 to 4-5, where you can't have a weakness, at 4-5, you have to have a really nice strength. And that's why I personally believe, assuming the stats that Essential Tennis gave me are correct, and assuming the definitions are sound of like a tennis player what does that actually constitute um that's why it's so hard for people to break out of that four or five um singles specifically but, but let's just say overall that four or five bracket or that four or five definition or that four or five rating because you have to have a weapon to be four or five based on what we agree on but you can't have a weakness no. when you get to the five oh so right? it, you like you know whatever shot you hate you know your backhand well, you have to be out there working on your yep. backhand constantly. Exactly. And you have to be playing with people that are at your level. And it's so hard to find people that are 5 0 to play with. All right. Um, so it's so difficult to get to that level. I, I mean, that's that's my biggest argument is the lack of players at that level that are actually still playing. I mean, think of how many people that are not maybe in peaked Let's in say. college. Yeah. They were 5 0, maybe 5 5. Yep. And now that that they knew that was their peak, they're kind of you know they're done. They're good. Well, hopefully, um, our peak isn't here yet. We're, we're, I hope we're, not. We're, we're I'm still trying rising. to get to that five zero yeah. level. I mean, what it, you you've been seeing my game a little bit with the new racket. Yeah, yeah. It's doing okay. Oh, I mean, it's, you didn't bully my backhand it's today. Turn. It's the racket's fault. Right? It's the rack. No, it's the racket's. Uh, the racket's the reason I play good. Hmm. It's not me at all. Okay. With no racket, I'm garbage. I need a racket well, to play well. I don't always have to string it. 
you know. So, we'll see you with the K factor. <laughs> well, I'm, the Wilson K factor. Well, we we're, belong to the same tennis dude, club. Dude, maybe now, we so should play a wooden racket match one day. Dude, I would five sets. No offense, I would crush you because you, you're not a servant volleyer. Oh yeah, I I'm agree. more of a servant volleyer than you are. I'm not saying I'm a servant volleyer, but like, <laughs> I need to put 120 RPMs of top spin. Jeez. And hit the ball. 120 is not that much. And hit the ball RPM. 69 feet over the net and have it spin and hit near the baseline. Right. I mean, you, you've seen my ball, how I hit. Oh, I've seen your balls. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a story for the podcast. Only something for fans. Get it. Only fans. <laughs> All right, monetization. This episode of Tennis Underground. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment down in the section below for my thick thighs. Um, other than that, if you guys want to have a more direct conversation with myself and the community, check out my Discord. I will leave a link to my Discord down in the YouTube comment section below. And as always, guys, happy hitting.